All right, three, two, one. Oh, wow, that was so fucking bad. Oh, okay, you, hello, everybody. Not, did you, you are behind. You are so far behind. Set, the tell me when you hear good. me say this. Uh, about five seconds after your image said, tell me when you're here to say this. Showed me that. But it's okay. Hello, everybody. Welcome to a new episode of the Phase Cast, Season 2. Season uh, same 2. Intro. Nothing's really different. Nothing's really changed. I'm farther away from my computer because the time of day is weird. But hi. Welcome back. Yep. Um, it is officially the Christmas season. No, it's not. Today for breakfast I had no, it's a not. pumpkin spice brioche. And pumpkin spice is Oreo. isn't Christmas. I'm wearing a sweater. I have my Christmas it's, mug. It's fucking November. If you can see here. If you can see here. This is with the Christmas mug. Actually, it's my fiance. So I gave it to her. But my favorite thing about this mug is from like Cafe Press and they cut it off here. Kind of makes it better. It's November. Yeah, it's Christmas. No. No. Christmas begins you, night of you, Halloween. You, Mariah Carey, and Michael Midnight. Buble need to get the fuck out of here and go back to your holes. I, I would agree on Michael Buble. I think like that Michael, Michael Buble? Buble... I don't care for Michael Buble, no. Um, oh, so you I just, think that once again, have trash taste. It's, well, it's sort of like going to see like a Frank Sinatra cover band to me. He has his own songs. Yeah, they're bad. What does he no, got that not. song where he's like, beep, 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 beep. I've never heard a Michael Bublé song in my life. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's okay. It's fine. I have a prompt for you, Joe, today. You have a prompt for me? I have a okay. prompt that I've been thinking sure. about this week, and then I thought, I'm not going to do any research on this, but I'm going to see how many we can come up with over the course of okay. this episode of the podcast. Okay. Um, sure. Name Nintendo 64 games that have 64 in the title. Donkey Kong, Mario. 64. Mario, Super Mario 64. Uh, Star Fox. I'm keeping the counter. Star. Yeah, Star Fox does, huh? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure they brought all the, all the old games, like all the Super Nintendo games, when they went into the Nintendo 64 as a branding thing. They just went like 64 because that's how many bits we Six, have. Star, Mario Kart 64. Well, no, it was just called Mario Kart. Oh, it is. No, no it, it, was, it was Mario Kart 64. You're right. You're right. You're right. There's, there's. I contradicted myself immediately. What the fuck? I made a statement that was wrong. What other major properties then? Because uh, I know there's four. None of the Legend of Zeldas went that route. Um, no, they did not because the Legend of Zelda is classic. Was it, was it F Zero or sixty four? No, it was, no, was F Zero. No, it's GX Wait. or X something. No, GX was the GameCube one. Oh, okay. Um, what was the Nintendo sixty four one? Was there one? I feel like there should have been. Was it just F Zero? Um, <laughs> Wave Race sixty four. Okay. Excite Bike sixty four. I don't think there was an Excite Bike 64, was There's there? an Excite dude, I like that game a lot actually. What the fuck? Excite Bike is that's not one a of good... my that's one of my favorite Nintendo Wait a second. What'd you say? Not good. It's you said Excite Bike? Dude, what? It's boring. It's a boring game. What? I'm not what? into racing games. It's not know? I mean, that's it's like a Okay, so Excite Bike is a racing game, but I feel yeah. like Excite Bike is more about the technical aspect of having to overcome the So obstacles. it's a slow racing game. No, it's an That's even game. worse. It's like Snafu, but with bikes. The fuck is Snafu? Ugh, you've never played Snafu? No, I've never played Snafu. What? No. Hold on. Look up an image of a Snafu game. All right, well, I look it up. He's going to put it up right over here in the Doom middle of us. Doom 64. Doom also, 64, yeah, that That's works. a deep cut, but I, that's a good game. Video game. Did Rayman do it? For the Mattel in television? Of course I never played Snap. No, like it's a board, like a, like a board, well, I guess there probably is a board or a video game version, but the board game 
It's not like a board game, but it's like a Snafu little toy. board game. We have to get a ball through. Oh, that's just a little maze game thing. Yeah, right? yeah. Maze that's game, what yeah. Excite Bike is. It's like a maze game. Yeah, and I hate. Game. Yeah, and that's dumb with a racing a element. Game. That's dumb as a video game to me. Dude, Excite Bike 64 is legitimately challenging, and I have a good time with it every time that I play it. I love Excite Bike 64. Mm-hmm. All right, so now mm-hmm. listen, as we continue this list, we've got a total of seven <laughs> Nintendo 64 titled things. Top right. five Nintendo 64 games. Go. Top five Nintendo 64 mm-hmm. games? Mm hmm. Uh, in no particular order for sure. me. Sure. Uh, Banjo Tooie. Yeah, a, a game that is better than its predecessor. So hard to do. Hard, hard but disagree. Fuck, hard disagree. You mm-hmm. think Tui is worse than Kazooie? So it took and, all and the I'll mechanics let... and great things from Kazooie and added more stuff and gave you more playable characters. You got to be mumbo jumbo. Yeah. So listen. You also got to turn into a Tyrannosaurus Rex, tiny and big. So, go on, I'm waiting for your version. Go, go, tell me. Tell so, me how you're right. Well, it's just my opinion, man. Mm-hmm. But. Also had a multiplayer shooter. Yeah, that was the best part of Banjo-Tooie for sure. I loved mm-hmm. that part. It was like Goldeneye, but. But Kevin's weirder. Mom, Kevin's mom would let us use the guns. Um, you mean the birds. <laughs> yeah. Ah! Which, which, by the way, is is another, did you know? Okay. Did you know we had to play Goldeneye at my house? Because like, Kevin's mom, I, I believe that completely. It, it was slaps only at Kevin's house. Right, uh, yeah, it was slaps right. only. <laughs> um, oh, Banjo. So Banjo Tooie was by far the front runner as a kid. I okay. loved Banjo Tooie. It was definitely my favorite. But I replayed both of them recently, like in the last mm-hmm. year, mm-hmm. and and Banjo Tooie does not hold up as well surprisingly i think uh, it has to do with the level design that it's too open and it has a lot of like running around back and forth to like different areas there's a lot of backtracking in banjo Tooie that just did not age well okay, okay. but i would have agreed until i replayed we will, it I we will politely disagree it. because open world and more backtracking into levels is not necessarily a bad thing i'm not saying and that it banjo necessarily is, is. I'm and i saying, feel like there was just so much more you could do in Tui that it was. That's why it was more fun. You could be fucking Kazooie by herself. I I understand what you're saying, and I do think that like oh, there were so many like powers and stuff that you could get mm-hmm. in Banjo Tui. Mm-hmm. But I think that I think that just I appreciated so much more as an adult the like tightness of the level design in Banjo Kazooie. Mm-hmm. That you mean the very small, easy to do in one run. No, that's the thing too. Is that I think that there there is there is replayability to Banjo Kazooie, even when you're beating the main game. There's still collectibles and stuff that you can find and all that stuff. The characters are better in Banjo Tooie. I'll give you that. There's that like burping hippo man in the in the <laughs> burping like, hippo man. Uh, the your boy dies. <laughs> And he comes back as a ghost. He had to deal with mm. his militaristic brother. He, that's like, right. <laughs> you got King Jiggy. Like, like, there's the like, and then you go back to his whole fucking family's house, and they're like, "Where's Dad?" Like, that's the whole <laughs> yeah, room. Bit. Like, it's you so- tell it. Like, that game is great. Like, that's yeah. to me that is far beyond Banjo Kazooie because I'm just like, you, you, here's the thing. It's not. I know it's a video game, but the whole thing is an experience for me, and. Kazooie was good, but Tui was better. Just give them both a a, a play through soon. I did recently, like two years ago. Still like okay. Tui better. Okay, all right, fine, fair. Um, fair. okay, so still in no particular order. I said Kazooie. Uh Kirby and the Legend of the Crystal Shards. Ah, yeah, classic. It's a very dumb and easy game, but I got to mix powers, and I love that shit. I that got also, to suck up two things, mixed powers. Go on. Also had a multiplayer mode. It did? Mm-hmm. I don't, how did that work? It was just little mini games. A lot oh, of mini like games. that gotcha. era of games had gotcha, little gotcha, mini gotcha. game multiplayer things, but I need it was to solid. I need to like look at some Smash Brothers is not on this list. Replaying old Smash is painful. True. I'll tell you Fair. that right now. Fair. <laughs> 
tell you that right now. Fair. Uh, let's see. Uh, WWF No Mercy. Fuck yeah, WWF No Mercy. I'm a wrestling dude. That game was fun as fuck. And it was it had like a creative character. It was so fucking good. But not good, but good. That's that's in my top five for sure. Um, I've never played that one. Mario Tennis has a special place in my heart. Um, it is a it is a game that my dad, my brother, and my uncle would stay up until like midnight playing every weekday. Uh, and just just fucking attack it, just playing against each other. That's it's a very fond memory. I love that game. Uh, this brings up a, a question: mm. Is Mario Tennis the family friendliest Nintendo sixty four game, or did we just have similar experiences? Because my that Mario Tennis it's so easy. Mario it's... Tennis for the Nintendo sixty four was like the only game that I could get my parents to play, mm-hmm. and we would play it so much. Mm. I don't. Mm. I don't know why. Well, because it's okay. So first off, that game has a deceptively easy control scheme, right? True. With just easy so much depth. There's yeah. so much depth in that stupid game. It's crazy. It's crazy how slicing and all sorts of stuff, and then like the different mm-hmm. characters and how they interact. Who's your main? Who's your main? I don't know. I feel like as a kid, I would always just pick Mario because I was like, I like Mario. Mar- Mario was my main because he was an all rounder. He yeah, could, he's solid. He could do everything. My dad loved the fuck out of Donkey Kong, and he just loved doing power shots constantly. Just fucking as strong as he can to just fuck with us. It was a good. I fucking love that game. That's definitely up there. I need a fifth. Ooh, did that, did if, that have sixty four in the title? It doesn't, does it? It's just Mario no, just Tennis. Mario Tennis. Mario Danny. I <laughs> fucking hear it, and it just gives me just a smile on my face. Um, ooh, this is hard. This is hard because a number fifth means because <sighs> objectively, I feel that there are better games, but games that are in my personal top five are not going to be there. Um, ugh. Number five, number five, and number five is, I think I'm going to go with, here's the thing, I wasn't really into Ocarina and Majora until later in life, Fair. and with better graphics, and if I go back to play them in the old graphics, it's still fun, but it's just, I'm, I'm, I got I got spoiled. <gasps> Paper Mario. Paper Mario is good. Paper Mario. Paper Mario is, I played the fuck. I it's one of the few RPGs I've played through multiple times, because they're so long and all this other stuff. But that game was, it used its low quality aesthetic so well. Um, it knew what it was doing. It was fun, and I just love all the characters in it. Paper Mario is great. The whole Paper Mario series is very good to me. I, I enjoy that. So those are my top five. Um. I think Paper you? Mario also is a good length. You mentioned, though, I don't replay RPGs because they're so long. Mm-hmm. That's a replayable RPG because it's a little bit shorter. But it's not like it's it doesn't detract from the quality of it that it is no. not 48 hours long. Mm-hmm. Also, um, there was a gambling system in there, and that was bad for me. I don't remember that. You could, you could to like, at the train station, you would unlock the ability to, like, get capsules for some money. And yes. <laughs> Yes. And I do that a lot. Um, so I think that if I, if I were, you know, well, I'm going to give you a top five. But yeah, if I were making that list, I don't think that Paper Mario would be on it. I think I'd give the edge to Thousand Year Door. Sort of similar to your Door? Was that? situation of, Isn't that was that the GameCube? second one. Isn't yeah, I know. But I'm saying like, I didn't. Oh, you're not I, talking about, okay, you're, this isn't on your list then. Again, if we're talking about Kevin, who you can watch us play The Sims sometimes, um, I watched Kevin play Paper Mario. I did not play Paper Mario oh, the first okay. time around. Gotcha. Um, so <laughs> that was he's, one of those he's, things. He, here's my little gripe about Kevin. Little gripe. He refuses <laughs> to acknowledge the Super Paper Mario series. He refuses to play them. He refuses to give them the time of day. I understand where he's coming from. Um it's because, Mario game. It's just a fucking Mario game. Yeah, I think the 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 thing. So what's and frustrating about that is that it just it ta- it takes time away that they could be working on the main series of Paper Mario. 
when they do things like that. I think Super Paper Mario is a totally solid platformer. But mm -hmm. when it came out, was I disappointed? Absolutely, I was disappointed. Uh, I got it still, and I played the fuck out of it. I wasn't but, disappointed. I was happy. And like Origami King, I was like, oh, yeah, okay. It's, you know, mm -hmm. I had fun with it, but I didn't finish it. And I am sad that it didn't have the, the solid, like, original mm -hmm. two gameplay. Um, uh, uh, top five. Top games? five. We're talking about top five N sixty four games. Yes. Um, this is the prompt you. Well, this is the follow up prompt you. We're gave deep me. in this now. This is the whole episode today. Yeah, man. This is the whole episode today. Let's go. Um, <laughs> Come on. Ocarina of Time. I played Ocarina of Time mm -hmm. when it came out. Listen, um, I love that times. game. It's great, but. It's just not in my top five N64 because I didn't no, really I play get it. on the N64. Yeah, I get it. That's the same with like Paper Mario for me. I feel like that's a really solid So you game are choosing w. Ocarina over Majora's. Oh, and, and let me tell you, I told this story on TikTok about Majora's Mask. I went uh -huh. to the KB Toys with my mom for my birthday. She was like, you can get a game. I was like, I would like Majora's Mask. The uh -huh. KB Toys guy was like, you do not want to get this kid oh, Majora's I've Mask. Heard this. Oh, because God. he's gonna he's going to get really confused and angry at the game. And you're not you're not gonna like it. And my mom listened to the guy, which is not really like my mom to do, but she did uh -huh. for some reason. Uh, and I didn't play Majora's Mask until just recently. Um, <laughs> I played Majora's Mask on the GameCube when Master Quest the bundle came out, or not right. that it was like the collector's edition. Mm -hmm. Didn't get that far. Started it on the 64 expansion on Switch, and that KB Toys guy was fucking right. Because I am now an adult and I'm playing Majora's Mask and I'm fucking pissed off, dude. I went through like the whole first fucking leading up to the first dungeon and then was like, oh, it's I, you know, it's like day two. I should reset time. Nobody tells you in that game that when you reset time, you lose fucking everything. Yes, they do. That's, that's, that's literally everything. the prologue. Well, then maybe the I skipped the prologue, Joe, you didn't. because you I went back to You have to play the prologue to, to get, do the thing. I had to get the Deku scrub, his little deed to his land again. Yeah. I had to fucking talk to... I was so pissed. That game time is hard travel as works. fuck. That game is hard as fuck. Mm -hmm. And that KB Toys man was right. I was so mad when I was like nine years old or whatever. And I was uh -huh. like, I want the fucking new Zelda game. But he was right. So no, not Majora's Mask. Didn't play it on the N64 at all. I was bitter about not getting it for my birthday. I watched Kevin play it a bit. But I did a thing because we were kids. I did a thing. I think I've told you this too. Where like Kevin was playing it because I didn't get it. I was like, Majora's Mask isn't that good. Because I was bitter. My top five. <laughs> top five. We had Ocarina. Ocarina of Time. Right. Um, oh, geez, this is tough. Banjo-Kazooie. The first Banjo-Kazooie. Sorry, Joe. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, okay. Banjo-Kazooie. Be more hipster. <laughs> oh, well, then, actually, I prefer Nuts and Bolts on the Xbox 360. That's the worst game ever created. <laughs> <laughs> I, you want to talk about, like, Super Paper Mario anger? Nuts and okay, Bolts. Okay, at least, see, here's the difference, though. Super Paper Mario is a good it's still game. still a solid game. No, but th okay, that's Nuts and that. Bolts though I think is an unfinished game where it felt like they definitely changed direction halfway through. Yeah, they definitely did, but I think I think also that it could have been a good game if it was not associated with Banjo Kazooie. It just did. Why was that a Banjo? -Kazooie the world game? felt empty, man. I don't know. It just felt. It weird did. It did. No, that's what I'm saying. But but the but the but the mechanics of like the the vehicle building and stuff. Like I get what they were getting at, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it did not work on any level it, that game sucks that's the also, worst game they I've did ever nothing played. but shit on banjo kazooie in the beginning I yes that. yes and it was like i'm here for banjo kazooie what are you doing fat fucks let them run around collecting these notes immediately because that's what gamers like yeah they were like ah, nobody wants to play a banjo kazooie game right i'm like no i fucking that's why i bought this game i do want to play a banjo kazooie game I it's like they tried to. Them. It's like they tried to trick you and gaslight you in the beginning of that game to be like, "Hey, you don't want this. You want the new." And it's like, "Well, this isn't good, though." You want to build a lopsided go kart that rolls around a hilly, empty landscape. T game number three. 
<laughs> on my three. On my list of Nintendo 64 games, I think uh-huh. maybe Rayman 2, The Great Escape. Ooh, I love Rayman. Rayman uh, was good. I played those on the PlayStation though. Those are okay. That's why I didn't put it in the uh Nintendo Fair. 64 category. I forgot that it even was also on the PlayStation. Fuck, that doesn't count. Um, <laughs> This is an I, N64 exclusive game list, N64 please. exclusive Thank game you. list. I think probably Mario Tennis. Fuck yeah, dude. Mario Tenny. Mario Tennis Mario. I played the shit out of. Um, Space Station Silicon Valley. The uh, fuck? Oh, is okay. Number four. Got you. Is that the... The the pawn pawn no is it the six six is the newscaster girl is that that what the what the fuck is that one so so, you... spa- so space station Silicon Valley is is an excellent game where you play as like a, a a microchip that you can implant into different little robotic animals throughout the world uh-huh. so you crawl around as this tiny little chip and then have to like jump into a dog or jump into a polar bear. Oh, okay. Uh, and basically solve like little platforming puzzles on each level. Uh, I remember it, I would look excellent. at this in Hollywood video. I'm looking at the cover right now. I can put it mm-hmm. up, I guess. Yeah. Um, up there. Uh, I uh, I saw the cover and I was like, this looks bad. <laughs> it was not bad. That game is a lot of fun. In the year 3000, list. there are no petting zoos. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a wild, like really weird sense of humor too. It's It's good. I love that game. Oh, this um, gra- these graphics, though. And um, I'm, I now got to look over at my collection of N64 games. games. Yeah. Oh, Pokemon Snap, hundred percent Pokemon Snap. Snap was great. Snap is amazing. Uh, we, we we like we we basically willed its sequel into existence as older generation people. That sequel but... is so good too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that I've beaten Pokemon Snap more than I've beaten any game. Yeah, or, and that's the thing, it's, though. It's, it's a quick run through, but it's a quick run. That's why it's not higher. I almost put Stadium Two on this list. I'm not gonna lie. Stadium the Two was really good. Stadium Two were fucking dope. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every what what happened to the mini game? What happened to the the four player couch mini game? It's called Mario Party. They still make those. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 the Switch one just came out. There's yeah, the Switch, Switch one. one. There's several. Yeah. What do you? I think I have I, one. But it just, there. I feel like so many games for the N64 came with like a set of mini games Kirby 64, Banjo Tooie, Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but but <laughs> Pokemon Snap is on there, not like because it's my personal favorite. It's not. Yeah, like, of course. I, yeah, that's what we're doing. Pokemon, here. Or Pokemon Snap is on there because I can tell you where everything, like, if you turned on that game today, I would be like, the Doug Trios and the, you know, I know where all the fucking shit is. I know how to get mm-hmm. the Squirtles to do a dance, all that stuff. I know how to violently almost kill a lizard for it to instead become a fire-breathing flying lizard instead. Yeah, you just toss it into the lava. Get in there. <laughs> uh, just bring back possibly... pester balls, you cowards. How dare oh, you yeah. not just <laughs> let me throw fucking horrible things at animals while I'm on a, on a, on a track ride. You're telling me that in... In the year 2021, I'm not allowed to throw poison at animals indiscriminately anymore. I thought this was America. Um, that's my list. I think those were solid, solid lists. You Which, said like, three games. No, no. Space Station Silicon Valley, Pokemon Snap, um, Ocarina of Time, Banjo-Kazooie, and Rayman 2. Oh. Five. Each Rayman doesn't count. Game. Oh, that's right. Fuck. Oh, uh, Mario Tennis. Mario Tennis was the one that I replaced. You said Mario Tennis already. Mario Tennis, Banjo Kazooie, Pokemon Snap, Ocarina of Time, Space Station, Silicon Valley. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> That's five. Gotcha. It's five. You're right. You're right. What was the WWE game again? I want to check that. No Mercy. Out. It was called. Well, that was back when it was WWF. WWF No Mercy. They they now take care of pandas, right? Uh yes. The World because... Wildlife Fund. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had to change their name to World Wrestling <laughs> Entertainment instead of so the they, World Wrestling Found Federation. So that they didn't get confused with the panda people? Yeah. Well, the panda people were being upset. I don't know. It's weird. Was that really why? 
I think they did. No, I think they changed to entertainment because they didn't want people to think. They did this thing where they had to do a whole ad campaign where they had to tell people that like, hey, it's it's this isn't like. Don't try this. They did a whole bunch of don't try this at home ads. And then a whole point of like, hey, this is entertainment. This is entertainment. This is not the real world. They basically had to break kayfabe uh, live on television and in uh, commercials. Uh, kayfabe, for those who don't know, is the uh, is the, the made up imaginary world that is wrestling and how we all like buy into it and believe it. And for some reason... And it's because it was like the the nineties two thousands era where like parents were all up on like oh this is gonna hurt my kids kids are gonna think this is real. Uh, they, we had to tell people like no it's not it's not real this is a TV show. So it's so a little bit of a brand change. Yeah, a brand change. Uh, we I could go on and on about how the history of wrestling has been weird. Um, how did this affect the people's elbow? Uh, it became the most electrifying move in all of sports entertainment. It really is. It yeah. really is. It really is the most. And that's why Dwayne the Rock Johnson is a megastar. What in rest in in in, re- in the WWE world they call them superstars. They don't even call them wrestlers. They're superstars. Well, but I just mean in general. I feel like in, in general, like yes. The yeah, Rock had general, the power. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Rock was. I mean, the Rock has done nothing but continue to rise and be great. Yeah. Like because. Fucking, because he's a showman, dude. He yeah gets that crowd going. I yeah. I've seen just 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 like montage videos of, of, of him asking elbow. the people if he can if they can smell what the Rock is cooking. Just no, just just him, just him elbowing we should, people. We should react to some wrestling next. That's what we should do. We should and it gets me wrestling. pumped. Yeah, it should. I'm like you, you because he does the thing. He like <laughs> looks around. And everyone knows what's happening. He kicks the people. He kicks them into position. Looks around. Takes off the elbow pad and everyone's getting <laughs> fired up, and it's the stupidest move. <laughs> it like, is. That's the thing. Let me be clear. <laughs> That's the doing thing all about of it. this just to do the one like elbow drop. In a real, I, first off, how did anybody? How did we have to have disclaimers with moves like this? To say like, <laughs> hey guys, he like moves his elbow to the side as he's this dropping. isn't real. <laughs> okay. Then. Oh my god! We should watch rock promos. I am so down to watch some rock promos. It's I would just do that. Talking. Yeah, it's just who he had rock. so many catchphrases. God damn it! Everyone would. That's wrestling. It's say a catchphrase, audience interaction because it's just live theater, and then you sell merch. That's how it goes, baby. That's how it I, goes. I suppose we can uh, uh, what end this end this episode with uh, what would be your your wrestling catchphrase, Joe. Oh, will be my wrestling catchphrase? <laughs> well, it depends. It's uh, on the spot, but I figure that's sort of how it well, happens in it, WWE. It, it, it depends. Well, no, WWE is very scripted. Um, it depends. Yeah. Uh, you have like what my character would be. Um, yeah, yeah. What uh, would your I'm character a face be? Face or a heel? What would your uh, character I would be, be? I would be the Phantom, except it's spelled F A N T O M, because I'd be a fan of every wrestler in the company I'm at. And my whole gimmick would be I would fanboy over them. And that when I wrestle them, at some point I switch to just copying their moves. <laughs> As a fanboy. <laughs> nice, okay. Yeah, All right, yeah. you've, you've yeah, put yeah. some thought into this. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Who knows? And uh, uh. <laughs> when I turn heel is when I, um, during the wrestling match, uh, I would use their worst rival's finishing move on them to just nice. be like, you know this, <laughs> yeah. And they'd be like, no, it's yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Good. That is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think, I think, that, I guess, I, what would your catchphrase be? My catchphrase would be, um, huh? <laughs> as as the Phantom. Well. <laughs> While you think about that, I guess I'll describe a scenario. I think that okay. probably if I did wrestling, I would have to lean into some sort of hipster vibe and I would maybe just tell people off for not doing the right thing. I think that what I would do, my finishing move would be like, I would like take time aside, like they'd be on the ground and I'd get out a copy of Catcher in the Rye and I'd go sit on the the, the rope 
for a second and read a little bit of it and then get really sad and then run over and just start <laughs> punching the guy and calling him a phony. <laughs> and that would be my uh, I think that would work once and then you'd need a you'd need a shorter finisher. I'd be called like the bookworm. Yeah, it'd be like an hour of me reading Catcher in the Rye. <laughs> and then and then it would and then it would end. Pick a different book every time. It'd be like the old man in the sea one day and then I'd fucking I think I, my catchphrase would be after I kill them with either their own finishing move or their arch rivals finishing move and pin them. I would say, I would just say, thank you. I'm one of your biggest fans and then slap them across the face as I leave the ring. Dude, that'd be good because you could say it at the beginning too. And people would know it's coming. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's, and that's what wrestling is. Uh, basically like you could just do a single move and people know what's up. Some, some of them are really obvious. Uh, Roman reigns, his thing is before he does a Superman punch is he'll go into the corner. He will slam his fist into the ground, pull his hair back and people start cheering. Cause they already know what's happening. He will could then he will then cock his fist and then he'll do a running jump to a Superman punch. And that's his finish. <laughs> people. Know yeah. It. You would, you would, you would like the fight would be started. They'd be like, you know, you got any words for your opponent. You get real close to Mike. You'd be like, by the way, I'm your biggest fan. And people would be like, bah! And then, it would go. and then it would go yeah yeah all right that's our episode today wrestling everybody. is great oh can Thank i you. can i can i say one thing real quick uh let's bring it down i don't want to bring it down uh rest in peace kevin conroy you that were was... you were batman you are batman to me that I, was it, very recorded on the show is how much i enjoyed you as batman and i was legitimately sad <laughs> i was a little heartbroken um I then proceeded to wear my Batman cowl and play the Arkham games that day. (laughs) Just to hear your voice. Um, He brought so much depth to one of my most beloved, like, characters in anything. And uh, not only that, he was just a fucking great person. So, like, it's it's rare. It's rare to be like, your hero is a hero. Because a lot of people's heroes are shitty people. Uh... But no, um, rest in peace, Kevin Conroy. Uh, uh, you will be missed, and fuck, the world took you too young. Goddamn. That was unexpected, and yeah. I knew that you were going to be upset about it, Joe. Yeah. He was, he was He was the first one to give distinction between Bruce Wayne and Batman in mm-hmm. that modern way, huh? Mm-hmm. He was. That's a big deal. That's yeah. a big deal. Yeah, he he defined the Bruce Wayne Batman as we know it almost, and they definitely reflected that in the comics later. Um, oh, it's it's insane! It's insane. Definitely out of nowhere too. I feel like I was just watching him on that Christy Carlson Romano podcast, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. very recently, and yep. I don't think that he shared with anybody that he was ill. And, uh, yeah, 66 is not the age that, damn, that sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the reasons why Batman the Animated Series was so good was it was him and Joker, right? It was Mark Hamill, Kevin Conroy. Uh, most animation voiceover acting isn't done in the same room. Mm-hmm. Which is why I feel like people who say voice acting is hard is easy is like you try acting to a wall, fuck you. <laughs> what are you talking about? You trying to play off a wall? Not gonna work. But um Mark and Kevin had a had a whole thing where they're like, Hey, if we're gonna do it, we're gonna be in the same room, I'll record the lines so that way we can play off each other. And ah, you can then t- that dynamic, ah so good. So good. Um, it is a shame. It is a, a downright shame. And uh yeah, it's been a fun episode. Uh, if there was a Batman game for the 64 that was good, I <laughs> I would have said it. There is not. Uh, there are some for the Super Nintendo, <clears throat> but there's there's none for the yeah. Yeah. some for the Genesis. No, nope. Batman and we Robin. Talk, we don't talk about that. Batman and Robin on the Genesis is good. I never played Genesis games. Really, didn't have a second Genesis. Anyway, you should pick one. Find one for cheap. It's there's some stuff on there. 
You're the dude who I would do that for. Like you, like you, the, you would sell it. Yeah, I guess that's true. Well, if I find a second Genesis suit, I'll give it to you. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. Thank you once again for spending some of your time with us. Um, uh, goodbye, everybody. Bye. Is it over? You have to hit. It's still recording. You tell me. <laughs> <laughs>